Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to run PlayStation 1 games and other retro games using RetroArch on an Apple TV through the App Store. So you no longer need to actually sideload this anymore. This is officially available on the App Store. And so this is going to be a great way to run all of these retro games. So we're going to be using a DualSense controller and the Apple TV on a TV itself. And we're going to be running the RetroArch front end emulator. So this is going to be a great way to run various games and it's going to work fantastic fantastically on Apple hardware. It's going to work fantastically now that we can run it through the App Store without any kind of janky workarounds. I'm going to show you how to pair a controller, how to get games like Tekken 3 working, how to load up ROMs and files, etc. And how to get games like this working as well as possible on an Apple TV. So the first thing we're going to do is get our Apple TV remote and then we're going to go into the App Store and download a RetroArch. So you can just type in Retro or just hold down the, uh, the button on the side of your remote, Retro. And then we're going to find here RetroArch or Arc. And uh, I've downloaded this before on my phone, but it's basically the same app for the Apple TV as well. So let's just download this. It's completely free to download. You don't need to pay for anything. So that's just started its download process. So uh, whilst we're waiting for this, we need to also get a Bluetooth controller paired up. So what I have here is my DualSense controller and I'm going to put this into pairing mode. So you can do this, or if you have an Xbox controller, you can press the pairing button on that. But I'm just going to show you a PS5 controller. Hold down the option and then the home button until it starts to flash. So that's the flashing LED. And then we're going to go to remotes and devices under settings. Then we'll go to Bluetooth. And then we'll see other devices here. So we have the DualSense Wireless controller put that into pairing mode, and then this can now control the Apple TV as well. It's pretty much essential as well for getting RetroArch to work too. So uh, basically now RetroArch should have downloaded. So we're gonna go down and find the app here. Okay, that's just now finishing. Let's open up the app. So here it's saying that we have a web address. So this is based on your local network here. So 192.168.1.12, it's different for every single uh, router, or Apple TV, or depending on your configuration. So just go there. And then basically we have the standard RetroArch menu. Now, the first thing that I like to do is I like to get my controller, go to settings, and then just change the input settings. Whoop, input settings, menu controls. Um, what I like to do is swap the, the OK and cancel buttons, uh, which, uh, it's actually synced over from my iPhone, which is quite interesting. Another thing I like to do is go to uh, settings and user interface, and then change this, and then change the menu type. So if I just go down, this is the Ozone menu. Um, some people are more familiar with XMB, which is gives a kind of PlayStation-like interface. So uh, I do like that. You can restart the emulator by double tapping the home button and then swiping up. Then we'll just restart this, get RetroArch up with XMB. And uh, that's a more familiar interface for me. I've used this on Lacquer and other front ends. The next thing we need to do is load up some games using that web address from earlier. So if you can't remember it, just double click on your remote, swipe up from here, and then we're gonna reopen RetroArch. And then we have this uh, web address that we're gonna go to. So basically, I'm just going to get my laptop out here. And uh, I'm just going to show you what to do. So basically, we need to assume that we're on the same Wi-Fi network. And I'm going to type in the web address that's listed here. And uh, we have RetroArch files, which we can go ahead and add. So there's a RetroArch folder here where you can add things like ROMs. So I can't exactly show you how to download ROMs, what you should be doing is that if we're going to be playing PlayStation 1 games, for example, you should be ripping them from your own PlayStation 1 legitimate disc, which I've already done. I've already created the bin.q files necessary for this. You can, of course, download these from the internet as well, but for legal reasons, I'm not able to show you where those are. So basically, we need to upload files here. So I already have some prepared files. For example, here I have a Tekken 3 bin and Q list here. And what I'm going to do is to upload these to the RetroArch folder through the web browser. So I'm gonna create a folder here called ROMs, and then we're gonna open this, and then we're gonna upload files. So 
here I'm actually going to create a new folder as well called Tekken 3. And then within this folder, I'm going to upload ROMs. On my PlayStation folder, go to my Tekken 3 folder. I'm going to select all of these .bin and .q files and then upload them to RetroArch. So all of that is uh, uploading now. Saying it's taking a little bit of time, so just wait for that to finish. So all of those files have finished uploading now, so I'm just going to move my computer. So you don't necessarily need a computer to do this. You could actually do this through a phone if you wanted to. So um, here I'm going to press OK. Another setting that you might want to change as well is the input setting so that we can go to the RetroArch menu whenever we want. So here, for example, I'm going to change the hotkeys setting here. And uh, the thing about Apple TV is that if you press the home button, it's going to load up the menu up here. And what I like to do is to change the toggle by cl clicking in the thumbstick here. That seems to be fine for retro games. So button 15, I think is pretty good. So now in RetroArch, I've got my controller here. We're going to go to load content. Load content here, and then we're going to go to downloads, go to parent directory, so that you can see the path at the top here, caches retro arc, and then we're going to go to that folder we created, ROMs. So that's the one that we created earlier using the web browser on our computer. And I've got Tekken 3 here. So here we're going to load up the .q file, which is the playlist file, and uh, I'm going to select my particular uh, core. So there's multiple cores here. The PCSX rearmed core doesn't require any BIOS files added on. So it's quite a simple way to get started. And it says here, no PlayStation BIOS file found, add for better compatibility. But that's not strictly necessary. So anyway, we've now loaded up Tekken 3 and we're in the game. And uh, let's say we want to go to the RetroArch menu. I bound it to this button here. So you can use that to do things like save states. Save state here, so that's saved. And that means we can get back in the game really easily. So to show you how this works. So you can see this works pretty well. It's a little bit ugly because of the scaling. So anyway, I hope you found this PlayStation 1 Retro Arch Apple TV tutorial useful. The Apple TV is a very powerful system. It can run many different other emulated systems, for example, PSP, Nintendo, DS, and plenty of others as well. Hopefully this video is a really good starting point for you. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.